So today I'm talking about my Punked MP02. I've had this thing for just over a year now and it's been a great little device for me. I use this thing to disconnect from this technological world that we're living in as much as I can. If I still want to be reached, but I don't want tech to be grabbing at me at all times, I switch to something like this. This phone is incredibly simple. It just does texting and calling. It has a notes app. I think it has a calculator and it also has Signal Messenger. Signal Messenger is an encrypted messaging service, which on the this device is actually called Pigeon, which is I think Punk's version of Signal. It's still Signal, but it's called Pigeon on Punk. I've not used it because I don't have anybody in my life who uses Signal Messenger, but if you're security minded, this is a great device to go for for that. Some of the things that I really like about this phone is just first of all, it's design. As you can see, it's a really cool looking device. It looks similar to Dieter Rams's calculator that he made. It's very, very elegant. Jasper Morrison is the designer who designs most of Punk's products, I believe. And he's done some different works as well for other companies and they're all very beautiful, very simplistic designs. The interface on the MP02 is great. It's just very, very basic black and white. I couldn't ask for anything more. I like that I can go into the settings and make a lot of tweaks. Like if I wanna go on the 2G or 3G or LTE network, I can do that all in there, but it's really just a simple phone. All it does is texting and calling. The battery life definitely leaves something to be desired. I like that it charges via USB-C because it integrates into my USB-C only kind of charging situation, which I'm trying to get to, but the battery is definitely extremely small. It doesn't last very long, especially considering that most dumb phones like flip phones and Nokia phones, things like this, they are kind of known to have a pretty good battery life. Like they can last for days and days. You can stretch this to days, but you have to be pretty diligent about how often you're using it, making sure that your Bluetooth's off, the data's off, everything's turned off if you're not using it. Battery life is, I would say not a negative, but definitely not a positive. I really like this phone. I like what Punk stands for. Punk is a company that takes your attention very seriously. They have a really, really good website, which is I think if you're interested in a lot of this stuff, like disconnecting from technology, it's a good resource just to pop along to. They have tons of different articles talking about disconnecting from technology, kind of going back to using things like paper maps and the joy of not having your phone tell you everything you need to know about a certain location. You have to ask people and you know, finding the romance in that kind of simplicity. They also have the Punk library on their website, which is a super cool resource as well. What it is, is they basically have just compiled a ton of different books. It's a huge reading list. If you're interested in disconnecting yourself from tech a little bit, and you also want to learn a little bit more about how this increasingly technological world is having an effect on people, then the books in the Punk library is a great resource. So check that out. Back to the phone, I want to talk about a few of the things that I don't really like about it. A few of the things that have stopped me from implementing this thing full time. The first thing is that the Punk MP02 doesn't really support group texts. When I get a group text, it is so annoying. Like I don't like being in group texts in the first place. I hate that you just get all these notifications constantly. And if you mute the group text, then you miss something pertinent potentially. So I don't like group texts to begin with, but with the Punk MP02, you're just going to have a terrible time with group texts. If somebody sends you a group text, it's just going to separate them into single messages. So if there's four people in the group and they're all responding, you're just going to get single text messages from each of those people and it's not going to be connected in one thread and it's going to be very hard to interpret what's being said. So group text on the punk is a no-no. Definitely don't look to that device if you do a lot of group texting. The next thing that's kind of a downside of having the punk is that there's no GPS. This is just another thing that kind of holds me back from adopting this as my full-time phone. I don't need a music player. Like I have the iPod, I'm okay with single use devices. Having a car GPS is one thing when you're driving places, but sometimes you're walking places and you also want the GPS and I'm not gonna like carry the car GPS around in my bag. So I just kind of wish that this thing had some very rudimentary, at least instruction-based GPS in it, but that's not really what the phone's about, so I realize that's kind of too much to ask. The third thing that just, I can't adopt the Punk full-time because of this is the fact that it's just work constraints. I think a lot of people find this, is that if you have a job that requires you to use a smartphone, any sort of applications that are smartphone applications in your job, then you're just gonna have a really tough time going solo with something like the Punk. As cool as this device is, it's a no-go for me with some of the shows that I work on because we communicate via Facebook Messenger. Sometimes you need to look at an email on the fly at work and I guess I could bring my smartphone with me, pull it out, you know, tether to it to get the data on it or whatever, 
and then look at it, but that's just annoying. Like having to bring another device, bring my smartphone anyway, but just have the SIM in here and have to tether to that. I don't know, I just, I don't see that as something I'm going to do. On Punk's website, they have a good article called Tech Combinations, I think it is. On that website, they explain a few different ways which you can pair dumb devices with smart devices in order to kind of take a little bit of your attention back. They suggest using something like this with a small tablet, say like an iPad mini. Their argument is that if you do a lot of reading and actually working off of your phone, the screen is usually too small to be that functional, at least that ergonomic, like good on your eyes, whatever. But if you switch to something like a small tablet, just having that extra bit of real estate on the screen allows you to work a lot more effectively and comfortably. So just keeping something like that on your person that you can tether to using the punct allows you to just have that smart option, but it's not as all pervasive because it's not in your pocket at all times. If you're interested in something like that, I think that might be a good solution. But for me, I'm, I don't wanna have an iPad right now. I'm, I'm, I've considered iPad mini in the past, but at this point, I just wanna have my one device as far as my phone goes. I already carry the iPod around. I don't really wanna have like five different devices in my pocket. I'd rather just go without. Now, ultimately, if you want this thing to work in your life, you can make it work. By using a device like the Punked, you are taking an act of protest against the way that things are going with this extremely technological world we're in, where surveillance is the norm, right? Surveillance capitalism. To carry something around like this instead of a phone, you know, maybe you're just gonna say, no, this is my line in the sand. If you don't wanna hire me for this job because I need to carry a smartphone around, then I'll look for some other job. You know, I could potentially go to work and say, no, you're not gonna be able to get me in the group chat, sorry. And maybe that's gonna be the way to go in the future. That is for sure why I'm trying to build more financial independence and resilience in my own life. So I'm able to kind of make these choices with things that I don't necessarily agree with, like becoming more and more connected with each new device that comes out. So I can just draw a line in the sand and say, you know what, I'd rather just keep my privacy. I'd rather keep my security. Maybe I'll lose a little bit of income in the process, but I know that I won't be subject to this technological world and have no control over going deeper and deeper just because I need the money. So I bet you weren't expecting that to come out of a tech review on something like this dumb phone. Now I know there's other dumb phone options out there. So if you'd like to see any more reviews from me on dumb devices like this, maybe the light phone or maybe a flip phone, I was looking at the Cat S22 flip phone. Let me know in the comment section and maybe I'll just do that. If you have any experiences with dumb devices or you think something like this would be interesting to try out, let me know in the comments as well. I'd be happy to hear from you. Thanks very much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.